hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is Jemima. so today is a continuation of the series answering questions to my professional mbbs exam question paper um so i've done the one for anatomy i've done for physiology i've answered my viva questions as well today we are going to answer my biochemistry questions <sighs> looking at this question paper i'm feeling nostalgic <laughs> well all right guys let's get on please um the first question says explain how the deamination of amino acids contributes to prevention of metabolic acidosis hmm one thing i love about biochemistry it's true very true please if you've not seen my video on how to answer biochemistry questions everything i'll say here you will not understand please go and watch that other video first i'll put the link up for you when you finish watching it you can now come down to watch this one so that you understand some of the slangs and stuff i'm going to say in this video okay all right so um explain how the deamination of amino acids contributes to prevention of metabolic acidosis um this kind of question it depends on how you were taught in your school in my school my biochemistry lecturers usually tell us just go straight to the point we don't want stories we don't want unnecessary parambulating if you understand what i'm trying to say so for this question what i suggest you do is just say brief introduction which should involve deamination of amino acid you can use glutamate for an example what are the products of this deamination of amino acid what are the products how do these products combine with the secreted h plus after you finish saying something about the oxidative deamination of amino acid you can now say something about metabolic acidosis what is metabolic acidosis what causes metabolic acidosis what is the relationship between this oxidative deamination and metabolic acidosis you know ammonium is involved somewhere in whatever explanation that you're giving mention it how the production of ammonium helps to prevent this metabolic acidosis that's that's basically all remember i've mentioned that you say something about oxidative deamination of amino acids what are the processes involved the enzymes involved what is the the product what are the products because i know it's not just one product what are the products of oxidative deamination of amino acids and how what exactly is metabolic acidosis what causes metabolic acidosis then this product of oxidative deamination how do they prevent metabolic acidosis so that's how i presented my own answer one b said classify enzymes according to international union of biochemists nomenclature based on the type of reaction they catalyze and give one example for each group <laughs> this question is very easy to get your full 10 marks trust me it's very very straightforward you classify it according to the international um, union of biochemists ec this ec that ec this ec that you list all i think seven oats oats leo i used oats leo o t h l i l so then there's an, there, there was another one that my lecturer told us about which is a t so i call it oat leal tea <laughs> so anyhow that you, and whatever you know mnemonic that you use however you can remember all seven of them please do for me that's what i use so you just list it according to your ec number after listing it you now give just one example did they ask us to explain anything okay based on the type of reaction they catalyze straightforward no need to explain any story you just after listing it out you just give example just one example for each group very very straightforward free 10 marks okay number two said highlight the clinical applications of protein denaturation and explain why biochemists describe some amino acids as nutritionally essential or indispensable this is a two-in-one question so let's let's address the first question the first question said highlight the clinical applications of protein den denaturation this one thing is too is kind of straightforward they just want to know what are the clinical applications of uh, protein denaturation how does protein denaturation help in clinical diagnosis of diseases this one is mainly biochemistry practicals that uh, i actually i don't know about how you were taught in your school but in my school i used my knowledge of biochemistry practicals you know all these practical precipitation 
and blah 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 that you use so when protein is denatured how does that indicate the presence or absence of a disease like Rotera's method, Moore's method, all these uh, methods that can be used to determine the presence of chlorine and excess chlorine and presence of ketone bodies. If you know how these practicals are carried out, you can use the knowledge to explain this question about the clinical applications of putting the denaturation. That is how I explained mine. Then the next one said, explain why biochemistry, Abeba, <laughs> explain why biochemists um, describe some amino acids as nutritionally essential or indispensable. Please remember, since this question is two in one, don't just answer everything as one, um, you know, one whole heading or one whole paragraph. Remember, but chemistry doesn't even like paragraphs at all. So please learn that first of all. So this one, you you write it under its own heading. See, this question, fact, you can even use just one sentence or highest two sentences to explain this question so it's just straightforward some of these amino acids can be synthesized in the body some cannot be synthesized in the body so whatever explanation that you're giving rallies around that one sentence so it's just straightforward if you have any other story that you googled to add feel free to add depending on the lecturer some lecturers want you to regurgitate whatever they've given to you so this particular lecturer um actually would appreciate you give him back what he has given to you so um the 2b said state three antioxidant e enzymes and explain how one of them prevents free radical damage if you watched my viva video my explanation of my viva question you would remember when i mentioned that i, I was asked this question in my general viva can imagine how, how I was so happy when, I, when they asked me this question because it came out in my mock, it came out in my 300 level exam, it came out in my main MB, it still came out in my Viva. So even though you wake me up from sleep, I can answer this question. <laughs> so um, um, although on, on the exam day, I couldn't remember the third antioxidant enzyme. So that's one, I think, half mark or so that I lost. <laughs> so, um, so you just list these three enzymes. I'm not going to list it for you. <laughs> Okay, don't be lazy. Go and find it out. <laughs> Depend on whatever your lecturer thought you do. So you list these three enzymes, then explain. The, imagine, they just explain how one of them prevents free radical damage. Let me just give you a bonus. What enzyme helps to keep glutathione in its reduced form? You get so that there will be prevention of oxidative distress of the RBC. So this you can use that phenomenon to explain how one of these free radical I mean, how one of these antioxidant enzymes you know help to prevent free radical damage so a question like this first of all you list the enzymes after listing the enzymes you now use one of them as heading then you now start with what could lead to this free radical damage you know mostly redox reactions give rise to reactive oxygen species so you just start from there when a redox reaction occurs, react reactive oxygen species are produced. And as these reactive oxygen species are produced, what are their effects in the cell? You list their effects in the cell, you know, mainly cancer and some other tiny, tiny distance. What happens when the cell membrane is destroyed? The plasma membrane of that cell is destroyed. What now happens? What are the diseases that could occur as a result of free radical damage what are the diseases that could occur after you list them you now mention how this enzyme in particular that you've highlighted how it prevents this free radical damage then once once you finish doing that i mean you've read that's how i wrote mine by the way then number three a said briefly discuss the inborn error of purine nucleotide metabolism known as severe combined immunodeficiency um okay scid this question is not straightforward i would say <laughs> it's not straightforward so this one is under nucleic acid metabolism so um in a question like this what i suggest you do you mentioned first of all what causes this scid is it the lack you get is it the lack you know it has to do with ADA the ADA <laughs> enzyme <laughs> you get if you don't know ADA enzyme go and google it <laughs> i'm not going to tell you <laughs> So this other enzyme is involved. So is it the lack or the deficiency? Those are two statements that you should be careful when using. So you 
when you state that what exactly causes it then you now explain how you get how this absence of this other leads to um, severe combined immunodeficiency i explain it step by step because once you miss one step it's gone so you explain it step by step and until you get to how the immune system is affected it depends on how you were taught but this is how i wrote mine in the exam so once you finish doing that how, how the immune system is affected and then what are now these symptoms these visible symptoms you can see remember what when i mentioned in my biochemistry in my how to answer biochemistry questions video don't go and write physiology inside biochemistry what the biochemistry is asking you for is the biochemical basis of this disease scid so if you go and write download all the physiology for them you're wasting your time you're wasting your ink and you will not get the required mark for it number 3b said discuss obesity stating the six causes and six as usual the part two of this video and the last part of this video will be out by tomorrow i remain your girl jemima bye